Hello, I'm Andrew, and today I intend to share my thoughts and experiences on this, the EcoFlow Delta 3. I'll share what I like, as well as what I don't like, with a view to helping you decide whether this is right for you. This video contains my personal opinion about the product and my interaction with EcoFlow. This content is not in any way sponsored or influenced. I bought the Delta 3 with my own money for my own personal use at the beginning of May 2025. This video represents my opinions based on usage between then and now in late July. In choosing this particular solar generator, I did a fair amount of research, including watching a fair few YouTube videos on the subject. There are a number of useful reviews out there, but my preferred source of reviews on this topic is a channel called Reray Outdoors, and he's done a full review on this unit, which you might want to watch for details of the features of this device, as well as tests on how it performs. I'll link to that review from the end of this video, as well as in the description. There's no point in me trying to replicate what is already a great review by someone else. Pop over and watch that if that's what you need. Instead, I want to cover a few aspects that I've not seen covered elsewhere. I want to start by summarising the differences between the versions of this device, as that's not super obvious from other reviews. First, there's this, the Delta 3. This has one solar input, giving us 500 watts of solar capability, and its USB-C ports offer 100 watt power delivery. The Delta 3 Plus adds a second solar input, giving a maximum of 1000 watts of solar capability. Its USB-C ports can output up to 140 watts power delivery, and one of the USB-C ports offers something called HID, used to power down servers in the event that the battery is going flat. Finally, there's the 1500, which is a somewhat rarer beast. This seems to be based largely on the Delta II, offers an extra 500 watt hours of storage and a couple of extra USB-A ports. However, on the downside, the extra storage makes it a bit heavier and a fair bit more expensive. Its cells are rated for fewer charge cycles. It's a bit louder and a bit slower to provide an input when acting in UPS mode. My use case is AC backup in the event of a power outage, something I suffered about 10 years ago and found to be very boring. I ideally wanted something that could run my microwave. That's about 1200 watts when I'm full chat. However, it would sit in the lounge by default next to my TV and would therefore need to be super quiet. The idea was that I would use it for time shifting energy, charging on my cheap rate overnight electricity and then powering my lounge during the day. The difference in energy prices between those tight times would help offset most of its cost during its life with a little cost going towards being a bit more resilient to power outages. The reason for that is something I discussed in my last video. Watch that one for the detailed reasoning of why that's a bit more likely at the moment. I'll link to that from the end screen of this one as well. And again, all of the videos I'm referring to are also linked in the video description. So with those my requirements, I chose EcoFlow's Delta 3 from those on the market. I reasoned that the extra solar input on the Plus might be handy, but it's unlikely, and the Delta 3 was significantly cheaper than the Plus in the sale at the time. I also bought the Delta 2 Max Smart Extra Battery. There is an expansion battery in the Delta 3 range, but it's only a 1 kilowatt hour expansion. There is no 2 kilowatt hour variant available in the Delta 3 series at the moment. Furthermore, the extra battery in the Delta 3 series is significantly more expensive than the Delta 2 version. For that extra, you get better rated cycle life and the updated design, but nothing else. The Delta 2 Max extra battery offers 2 kilowatt hours of extra storage, maximizing the amount of energy I can time shift and making the cost to payback ratio much better, as well as it offering the most bang for the buck available from the battery expansion options available from EcoFlow. What's more, the extra storage increases the time for which I can manage off-grid in the event of an outage, so that's useful anyway. However, it making the sums add up definitely helps. A lot of that extra storage is used on a daily basis as part of my time-shifting strategy to achieve the payback, so it's all rosy from the point of view of storage. What's more, I can lift and move each separate unit. That wouldn't have been the case with something without an expansion option. 
battery storage is heavy and therefore being able to split it into separate parts for transport makes it much more likely I'll actually be tempted to do so. Ordering and delivery was straightforward and quick and unpacking and setup pretty easy. You have to register for an account with EcoFlow to benefit from the extended warranty and to get access to firmware updates, but more on that in a moment. The Delta 3, like the Delta 2, uses LFP cells and that could lead to a bit of a problem. As I detailed in a recent video, LFP needs a bit of special handling. That previous video on EV battery chemistry is true not just for EVs. Again, I'll link to that video as well from the end screen and the description. Have a watch of that video if you want to understand the details of why, but LFP cells need to be charged to 100% every once in a while. However, it's better for us not to cram them full on every charge, so I've set a regular charge level of 90% and a lower discharge limit of 10%. I hoped that the BMS would know that an occasional maintenance charge was required and do it without me intervening. That's especially true when adding an extra battery, as the two separate devices could easily fall out of sync. And indeed, they do. It's not all that unusual to see the main unit and the expansion battery show different percentage states of charge, indicating that they might be a bit unsure where they are. However, the good news is that it seems to do the required maintenance charge on its own. I'm not sure quite what criteria it uses to do that. It doesn't seem to be predictable but I have seen it do a full charge on a number of occasions, which I'm glad to see that they handle for me. Well done, EcoFlow. I want this to be a fit and forget solution, and in that regard, it is. Under my normal usage, the power station is outputting about 110 to 120 watts, somewhat less when the TV is off, but it's powering most of the lounge, bar the majority of the lights in the room. So it is shifting a fair amount of energy each day. It meets the brief in terms of volume. When the inverter is lightly loaded and the charge speed set to low, I don't hear it at all. Not yet anyway. Let's hope that remains the case as the unit ages. What's more, with its 1800 watt inverter, it would run the microwave easily, so it means that requirement as well. I've also tried using it to run the fridge, and I'm happy to confirm that it handles the inrush current of the compressor startup no problem at all. So it seems to do the job I have for it well. Well, at least, kind of. Let's move on to the not so great. That's what a number of you will be here for. And in that regard, I'm going to split my concerns into two sections, the company and the device. I don't know about you, but I'm not very keen on heavy handed marketing. Sadly, I categorize EcoFlow as very heavy handed. You'll notice that their sales channels use a few psychological tricks to try and encourage you to buy from them. Things like anchoring bias. This is when a company tells you a high initial price that fixes the value of something in your mind and then offers you a discount from that price. That makes the item seem better value, when in reality it might not be. EcoFlow has a sale in the last week of every month, where the prices become more realistic in comparison to solar generators by other manufacturers. Those sales always have an end date, and in some cases use countdowns to encourage a quick decision on a purchase, another technique intended to nudge you into buying. To be fair, there seems to be a lot of this happening in this space at the moment. EcoFlow are far from the only company making use of these tactics, but their use is pretty prevalent in the way the products are marketed and sold by them, something I would rather they stopped. They can also be the least transparent in their headline specifications of what their devices can do. You'll notice that occasionally their power stations claim a maximum AC output power that is twice what the device can actually deliver. This does seem to have changed at the moment, but for a while the Delta 3 and Delta 3 Plus were quoted as offering up to 3,600 watts, which isn't really true, as they only have 1,800 watt inverters. It is fair to say that they can handle surges of up to 3,600 watts, but only for a second or maybe two. Anything other than that is not supported. Xboost doesn't support 2,400 watts either, by the way, but that's another story. For example, here is a listing from eBay showing their River 3 Plus with that wording, up to 1,200 watts. However, River 3 Plus has a 600 watt inverter, it can't support any more than that. 
as I say, their wording has changed again recently and now is a bit fairer in its descriptions. I'm happy to see that. I don't think misleading people is a great plan as it could lead to a lot of returns from disgruntled buyers. Sadly, the heavy-handed nature of the marketing isn't confined to the pre-sales process. You'll also find that you get a lot of emails once you've registered an account. Lots and lots of promotions and offers. Even if you've set your preferences to indicate that you don't want them. I jumped through another hoop the other day to unsubscribe from the latest set of marketing emails I'd received. Let's hope that stems the flow. These are not welcome in my inbox. You might perhaps consider setting up a dedicated Gmail account for use with EcoFlow. That gives you a better choice of options if they won't leave you alone. At least you retain the ability to stop monitoring that address if all else fails. It's sad though, really. I don't really feel like a valued customer when a company hassles me like this. Instead, I feel more like a target, what might be called a mark in certain circles. It's quite disappointing. Their Eco Credit scheme doesn't entirely help either. That tries to reward me for sharing more personal information. Eco credits aren't very useful to me, so maybe I won't tell them my date of birth. Thanks very much. I bought the Delta 3 to give me the option of backup power, but I intend to save money with it as well by time shifting my energy use. The Delta 3 offers to help with that through its time of use mode. I set up my peak and off-peak hours, at least to the nearest hour, as it currently doesn't support off-peak time starting or ending at anything other than on the hour, which my tariff happens not to do. But I could get close. Then I enabled time of use mode and gleefully watched it turn off the AC input until the off-peak time was reached, at which point it started charging. All was well. Or so it seemed. The second night it didn't start charging when expected. I went into the screen in the app to check the settings, at which point it started charging. That was odd, but never mind. On the third night, it failed to start charging again. Again, I went into the app and checked the settings and it started charging again. I was starting to smell a rat. The following day, I googled the problem, keen to find out what I was doing wrong, and came quickly upon a discussion on Reddit about this feature. That thread is linked in the description and makes for interesting reading. It seems I'm not alone in having problems with this particular feature. A number of other people had suffered the same behaviour. Upon reporting it to EcoFlow, the poster had received an email reassurance that this bug would be fixed in an upcoming firmware release. The email said that the release was scheduled for December 2024 but could be delayed. It was delayed. Nothing was released. A further follow-up from the original poster several months later resulted in another apologetic reply saying the release was coming in March but that doesn't seem to have come either. So it looks like the firmware is just a bit buggy. If you hassle support enough, they can add you your device to what might be a beta tester list and your device will get a different firmware version, but I wonder what might be wrong with that one. After all, if you have to ask to get it, then they don't seem to have all that much confidence in it. If it was a good version, then presumably they would roll it out to everyone. Google a bit more and you find other issues too some very frustrated sounding users. It seems that firmware is a bit of an Achilles heel for this device, it's just a bit buggy. I suspect the development team are busy writing firmware for new products they are releasing, and heavily marketing to me of course. That leaves the Delta 3 somewhat unfinished and unloved, which I won't lie, is a bit of a worry. For the moment I'm working on the assumption that time of use mode won't get fixed, that it effectively doesn't exist, and I've used a workaround instead. One of the other features the Delta 3 offers is scheduled tasks, and they do work, well, most of the time. Therefore, I've scheduled a charging session for the duration of my off-peak rate, and I use a plug-in timer on the input to switch off the main supply to the unit outside of that. This works, but it isn't ideal. If my energy usage is unusually high on any day, then the battery will be depleted and the inverter will switch off. That would cause my equipment to lose power, which is kind of counter to what I'm trying to achieve. An alternative might be to use a smart plug and a bit of home automation. Reading the state of charge from the power station's API and re-enabling power through that smart plug if the battery gets too low. However, there is a small problem there. If we look at the documentation on the developer portal for EcoFlow products, 
we can see the API for lots of their kit. However, the Delta 3 is missing from the index down the left. This is another sign the project never quite got finished. Since there isn't any documentation available on the device, there is no way to do automation either, and we're limited to my rather crude solution. It works, and I'm time shifting some energy, but I always have to be a bit conservative to avoid running out. And that means I'm not maximizing the return on the investment. I'm leaving a bit on the table, carefully selecting what runs on time shifted energy and what gets powered directly. That's a shame. This isn't the only fault either. I've seen a suggestion that the HID feature on the Delta 3 Plus doesn't output valid data, meaning it doesn't deliver on the additional UPS feature promised on that device. One YouTube channel even had a unit that overheated on them regularly, as the logic for the fan speed was wrong. It would run the fans at full speed when the inverter was lightly used, and then slow them down to a crawl when under heavy load. Fortunately, that does seem to have been fixed, at least mine doesn't seem to do that. Mine is nice and quiet when under light load, so it seems like they might have done at least one firmware fix at some point. I mentioned that scheduled tasks are mostly reliable. I have had one problem with them. Ecofo released an update to the app, in which I think they added the ability to disable a scheduled task. However, I think they probably made a bit of a mess of the deployment of the change, in that my scheduled task was disabled as part of the release. I suspect they might have set the wrong default as part of the rollout and disabled everyone's schedules. Oops. In summary, the Delta 3 is a nice piece of hardware and the specs and features make it attractive. However, the firmware is a bit buggy and fixes seem to be delayed, perhaps indefinitely. The device is far from pointless. What there is seems to be useful, but the additional features that set it apart from the competition don't all work so they shouldn't really be listed as features, since they're not actually supported at the moment. I should be keeping my Delta 3. It's doing the job I need of it. However, the buggy firmware, combined with a lack of updates to resolve any issues, and the heavy-handed marketing, make it difficult for me to recommend it. I think this is a case of considering what it's worth to you as it currently stands, and assuming no further updates. If you need an almost silent solar generator, and you can get a decent discount on it, then it's worth considering. But I feel like it's overpriced by default, because the extra features it offers to make it stand out from the competition don't all work. A feature that doesn't work is worse than useless. That's a frustration waiting to happen. Furthermore, EcoFlow's heavy-handed marketing doesn't make the user experience all that pleasant. There are plenty of people who won't mind emails about promotions and offers, but it's not my cup of tea. Thanks very much for joining me. If you have questions or comments, then leave them in the appropriate section. I'd love to hear your thoughts in that section. Have you been looking at solar generators, or do you have one that you like and can recommend? If you've liked the video, then it's a big help to me if you click the thumbs up button. And I'd love to have you as a subscriber if you want to see more from me. Thanks.